I have a question for you. Okay. What <laughs> what hill would you die on? What's something in your life, a hill, you would die on? Like, for example, what would be? Like, uh, the hill I would die on is like something I would say that I'm convicted to forever. Like, that is like, uh, that I will say that our mom loves her grandchildren more than she loves her children. And you'll die on that hill. I'm going to die on that hill. I believe it. Hmm. You have a hill you'll die on? Uh, maybe I don't have any, um, you know, core beliefs, morals, or beliefs. Maybe that's uh, well. Uh, welcome to the whiskey oh, show. I don't have a, a hill. I guess. I'm a hill list. I got a hill for you. Hill Rock. That's the hill I'd die on. <laughs> hill Rock's pretty good. Hill Rock Estate Distillery. That's what we're drinking today. It's a double cask rye whiskey. You're watching the whiskey show. I'm Ryan Bayless. I'm Alec Bayless. And uh, this is. Made a couple miles away. Yep. Uh, in, the, in the Hudson Valley. This uh, barrel is the Pedro Jimenez Owner's Special Reserve. 58.4% alcohol, which is 116. Yeah. Proof. That's is pretty it? great. 116? Yeah. Yeah, right? No. 50 no? what percent? 58. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 116. So said 50. 0.4, almost 117. Whew. Whew. That's going to burn, right? A double cask. Should what does double cask mean? No one knows. Uh, it's up for debate. <laughs> um, That's not true. Double cask, I assume, is... It's like double barrel. Like is, barrel twice. Is finished in a second cask. Right. Know? Yes. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, double yeah. oaked. And uh, Pedro Jimenez uh, is a is a, essentially a wine barrel, right? Yeah. So this is a double cast rye whiskey. It's a rye whiskey uh, that has been finished in a wine barrel. Yeah, and I guess that's um, why they call it double cask, not double oak, because right. it's, it's not just double straight oak. It's the got yeah, you. Yes. The wine. Finish. So uh, a double oak, like you would find with like Woodford Reserve, yeah, is just like moving it to a new barrel or sometimes yep. an old barrel, I guess. But like it's sitting in another barrel for a little bit longer. Yeah, usually a fresh barrel. I guess usually that a fresh be... barrel to get more of those wood sugars. Right. Yeah. So double cask is just like a. It's essentially finishing. This is finished. Yeah, that's what um, this is saying. And now finishing is a little bit of a. Uh, I wouldn't say controversial topic, but people are kind of funny about it. Yeah, I think um, if you have been into whiskey for the last 10 years plus, uh, finishing is, is, is equivalent to covering up bad whiskey. But now, and especially in the last two years, I feel like it's so commonplace that yeah. uh, it's, it's perfectly It's actually a way great. to elevate a lot of great whiskey. It'll change it. Yeah, for sure. And it's create a good new, experiment. New whiskeys. I don't know if it elevates it. Yeah. Um, uh, Hill Rock, from my understanding, they're all a large estate. Uh, they say they're an estate distillery. All their photographs, they seem like they're people who are on an estate. Yeah, and I mean, we've been there, too. It feels like an estate. Long very, driveways. Yeah, uh, really Beautiful long, grounds. Yeah. Um, smells like whiskey. Yeah, it's a uh, uh, it's farm. And they grow, I think, most of the grades, like right outside the tasting room is where their rye is growing. Yep. Um, which is great. We love that. Uh, uh, and as I always say, story of craft is a story of place. Uh, it's nice to know the place. And uh, this tastes so you're shaking. You're getting the shakes. Alex, oh, getting the shakes. All right. Too much talking, not enough walking. Okay, baby. Here we go. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I think. Uh, and so dad was a part of that group where he's still a purist and is sort of anti finishing. Mm. Yeah. I was heard him explaining angels envy to someone and was like but it's finished and i was like like i don't know what the butt is like yeah. it's all part of a process like what's the butt dad? Old, old forester is finished yeah the the, the 1920 or whatever is one it? It, that's finishing is in a second once it leaves that barrel to me that's and you put it in something else that's and finishing. for a short amount of time yeah that's finishing yeah there's no difference. Whether it's a new oak, white oak barrel or it's a wa old wine barrel. Or whatever it is, you're taking it out of that single. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure maybe there's there's yeah. some more nuance there that I'm unaware of that yeah. someone, a distillery could tell us, but, or a whiskey, the savant. Savant. What are they called? The people that They're are called, psalms of whiskey? Uh, oh, they are called whiskey, not kind of sewers. Like monger? 
No, no. Cheesemonger. Like yeah, but those uh, kind yeah, of people. Yeah, those folks. Um, I'm going to try this real quick. Or on the nose, I get cherry right out of the gate. Yeah, cherry, a little bit of oak. Well, oaky cherry. Mostly cherry for me. Um, maybe a little stone fruit. <laughs> Ooh, it's hard to... Well, it's one. So it's, it's nearly it 117 out of proof. Yeah. It's mm. kind of hard to nose it because like, I'm getting more alcohol than... Uh, I don't know the age on this fella, but uh, maybe it says right here. I don't know. Uh, nope. Well, so that means it's got to be older than four. Ooh, yeah. It's got a kick. Yeah. That is a kick. Yeah. Wow, I feel like an amateur right now. Yeah, well, Ooh, I mean, we were, you me. know, uh, most of the episodes we've been doing lower, lower E proof stuff. This is, I think, probably the highest proof thing that we've had uh, oh, yeah, on, got the, a, on the program. It's got some heat to it. Yeah. Um, also, it's definitely like rye spice, like you're, yeah, yeah, like yeah, you're yeah, used you to that, more traditionally. That rye punch, yeah. Mm. Can you taste the the wine cask? Oh yeah, yeah. I get a little bit of that. It's a lot in the finish. finish. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, that's kind of a funny thing about finishes. You taste them often in the finish. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The finish being that last like little part of uh, the, the taste experience. experience. Oh, that, that finish. What yeah. do you call? So I you got you got on the nose, right? That's when you smell it. Then when it hits the tongue, it's a palate. It hits your palate. That's the palate. Yeah. yeah. And then the finish. finish is just that. So it's like nose, palate, finish. Yep. Is there anything in between? No. Nope. Back palate, front palate? Side palate. Side palate. Wood palate. Well, you, so another thing, uh, this is for folks who, who might not be as regular booze hounds as we are. Um, and if you are, then you can finish my sentences or correct me when I say obvious wrong things. Uh, but chewing on it is a popular thing in whiskey, right? Yeah, like, there's a Kentucky Chew and a Kentucky Hug. Well, you call it a Kentucky Chew? Sure. A Kentucky Hug is like that first sip of bourbon when it kind of like burns your chest. And the the uh, the chewing is just a way to kind of like get let the flavors hit your palate. Uh, I've often heard like when you're first trying something, the best thing to do is just like get a small amount, just like because you need to open your palate a little bit. Well, you need especially a, something yeah. like this as a higher proof. You don't want to just take a big sip of this, gulp it. No, it's not no. cool. Not not only is it like not cool, you're just not going to enjoy what you're drinking. Uh but if you put a little bit, open your palate, let your tongue say like, oh, this is the party I'm going to. Yeah, you need the alcohol yeah. just to kind of get introduced. Mm. And then you can, especially after that first sip, you're going to be able to taste a lot more of the notes. Yeah, yeah. I dig that. You dig that? Yeah, I dig. I dig that. Yeah. Yeah. I would need, if I was being realistic, maybe a, a little bit of ice on the sure. a, a big rock to just kind of like dilute it a little bit. I think it would, it's good to start really high and then yeah. it will uh, as it dilutes and you won't lose too much proof all yeah. along the way yeah i think that there's this funny idea that like we're working our way towards like higher proof and higher proof is i don't know if it's manlier or more pure whiskey or uh less water so it's you know whatever uh how God intended. How God intended. Neat. And some people drink neat because, like, how could you have it with rocks? First of all, rocks open up the flavor for a lot of whiskeys. So uh, the best way to drink whiskey, as everyone says, is the way you like it. Uh, but something higher proof, I'm with you. Throw an ice cube in there because that first sip, first couple of sips are just going to be colder. They're not going to be. It's, it's not enough water to water it down. Yeah. And as it does a little bit, as it does start to melt, the flavors are going to open up. And you're going to have a fuller flavor experience. And that's why we're drinking this stuff. Yeah. Right? If you got a, you know, uh, if you've already been drinking the higher proof for a time period, your, your palate might be fine. So, but especially if you're drinking it for the first time, you're like, what is this shit? Yeah. This is fucking burning my mouth. Like, yeah. I don't like it. Then definitely. Yeah. If you want, that's how you're going to get the most out of the experience. So. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. I, uh, handcrafted. I know we're, we're drinking New York whiskey. Uh, this whole entire season. And uh, it's such a joy. You know, we were debating. We're like, all right, well, what, what do we want to bring to the table here? Uh, do we want stuff that people recognize that they might have home, they could drink with us if they're not New Yorkers? And we really were, we came to the conclusion that we want to like open some minds, right? Let's try some stuff. Uh, this again, as you probably recognize, there's a theme here, a lot of rye in, in New York. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is certainly no exception, but now we're playing with a double cask. 
uh, with a, a wine finish. Like that's something kind of fresh to the table. Um, would you would you eat food with this? Uh, peanuts, little fruits, maybe like the little so a little fruits. charcuterie board, a little charcuterie no board, no big bites, no big bites, absolutely not. Would you? How- um, I don't really drink, or I, I don't really drink. Yeah, uh, it's my yeah. First, okay, no. yeah. Tell I that to re- my pastor. I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a pastor. I don't. Uh, no, I would. Um, I don't eat when I drink uh, alcohol because I feel like they cancel each other out. I feel mm. like uh, I'd have like wine with food. Yeah, because it's I'm you know I'm not gonna. They work in tandem in a way. Yeah, but. I don't know. I don't really eat. I could see a lot of people having like steak and a whiskey, but here's my idea. It numbs your palate. So you're losing out on flavor yeah. of the food. I'd rather have it afterwards. Yeah. Like a, like a dessert. My ideal. Well, if I'm going to drink a cocktail during dinner, I, it better be a gall darn martini. Hmm. Uh, I'll but have a cocktail. I love to have a Manhattan before dinner. Hmm. Order some oysters. Oysters, as some people call oysters. regionally speaking. Uh, get some oysters. Enjoy those, maybe yeah. with my Manhattan. And then when I get a regular dinner, I I like to drink seltzer water, mm. you know, or something to kind of just like, or a martini, or a martini, but I don't switch spirits usually during a meal. Yeah. Um, and then I end, after my meal, rather than a coffee, I'll take a higher proof, mm. uh, something neat. I do love an espresso after dinner. I do love an espresso after dinner, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, no. But... Uh, and it does feel like when you do that, you've had a full meal experience. Yeah. Do you like, uh, this is something I don't like. Um, okay. Uh, booze in, in sweets, like ice cream. Oh. Like a, like a alcoholic milkshake. Oh yeah. Um, do not like, I those. don't think you should be mixing dairy with spirits. Although I've done it maybe a few times. It hasn't been as big a deal as I thought it would be. You mean like milkshakes? With, yeah. Because I'll say dairy is incorporated in lots of cocktails and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, even that I don't totally love when dairy is no. mixed in with my cocktails. Yeah. I mean, even egg whites is questionable at times. It's good, but come on. I'm a firm believer, <laughs> truly, that's what my mom always says, truly, truly, uh, that a, co- a good cocktail really should be three ingredients, maybe four. Hmm. I don't like when things get too crazy. Uh, that doesn't need to be. And that's because I'm also drinking them with good spirits, right? I try to. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, my old fashions sometimes don't have simple syrup or anything. It's just, I guess it's just whiskey and bitters a lot of the mm, time. So, mm-hmm. um, and maybe some orange peel. Yeah. Or some orange bitters. Yeah. Do you have a favorite bitters other, other than Angostura? No. That's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they do make a... Uh, Reagan's number six or whatever orange bitters. Yeah. After Gary Reagan. Who's that? It's like a cocktail legend. Oh. I don't know. I don't know, actually. <laughs> well, he is. And yeah, he has a, an orange bitters. I think he's uh, no longer with us. Some of the greats. That's kind of the sad part about, you know, uh, and I don't know that person's story. Uh, but. You know, some of the Dave gr- Pickerel, for example, yeah, uh, cocktail artist. Dave but. Pickerel's a great example. Let's talk about him for a second. We are drinking Hill Rock. Dave Pickerel was the guy who developed the Hill Rock Mash Bill. He he um, did. He was their uh, master distiller. He's initially. listed as master distiller. He was a consultant. He was a big rye uh, person, rye advocate when it was it's it's in yeah. its rise. Um, and he's sadly passed away. But everyone we've spoken to about Dave Pickerel just Love seems to think guy. he was the greatest guy who just loved this stuff. Um, I was just going to say, yeah, it's like people, you know, some of the greats, uh, they don't live huge, long lives, I guess. But uh, then you have folks like uh, over at Wild Turkey. Yeah, the know? Russell family. Russell yeah. family, living long, full lives. Oh, yeah. Smoking cigars and drinking, you know. Hey, maybe, a, you know, it's all your own body makeup. Yeah, right? I know. That's what makes God. It. Isn't that sort of scary? Like you yeah, sort you of already, you can make some good health choices, right? And you can kind of curb things one way or another. But like you were at the mercy of your genetics. A little bit, yeah. A lot Not of a little bit, a lot of it. Yeah. Like, I had this doctor, I was just like, oh, I feel this or that. He's like, oh, what, do your parents have that? Any issue with that? No. Okay. You're fine then. Damn. It's like, what? Really? It's Damn, like that. Fool. It really felt like, all right, well, yeah, like our parents have diabetes. 
diabetes. So you're going to have it. And so it's like, well, there's a good chance that at some point, but most of that's diet, like when you're young at least. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, you know, I don't know. We're sort of at, we're on, we're on these, like, uh, we're just these little human beings on these tracks. Uh, you know, it's just like coming down the factory line. Yeah, it's like, woo, birth, you're a little baby. And then you're just, we're like, where are we going? Where are we Towards going? Towards death. Towards <laughs> Straight to death. No, oh, there'll be ups and downs, but we're going to death. Yeah, it's one of the experiences, you know, that's all. It's just the same. Hey, man, if you go around this thing once, fuck it. Have a hell of a ride. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yes. Fuck, man. I yeah. Know. You've had a good ride, do you think, so far? You're 30 years old? I'm a little bit into it. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I yeah. think I'm just learning to enjoy the ride, which sucks. Yeah, me too. Uh, but um, yeah, doesn't suck either. Yeah. It's like, hey, no time better than now. Yeah. I'm almost a year into therapy, and I feel like it. Uh, I'm like, man, how was I living before that? Yeah, maybe I was living what, behind the curtain. Maybe that's what the show should have been called. Therapy? Whiskey therapy. Whiskey therapy. <laughs> and then we definitely put the disclaimer up front. Like we, this is just our opinion. But we're going to have a whiskey and talk about life. We should know. start another program called Whiskey Therapy. We should. Yeah. So if you're tuning if in you're now, listening to whiskey go therapy. looking for it. You just yeah. never know. No, this Maybe. is the whiskey show, which yeah. includes sometimes whiskey therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which we, again, disclaimer, don't. Don't these are just opinions. Use your brain. Use your brain. These are just opinions. But we are the Wayne's world of the whiskey world. You did start therapy and you started uh yeah, not a traditional therapy, which no. is which is of course I signed a disclaimer saying this is not traditional therapy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you did. Yeah, first day one. Show us all that as a red flag. Yeah, you know? That's a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. I uh no, it's it's based on a traditional a psychologist Carl Jung. It's Carl. It's Jungian dream work. It's just that it's it's. I think you know traditional talk therapy has you incorporates dream work into its process. I'm doing exclusively dream work, hmm. so it's like centered completely around dreams. You feel like it's missing out on some of those other. No, because what it is is it's just like uh, a lot of things. It's just an, a way in. Yeah, you know, it's just a way in. So like. I, uh, different door, same room. Yeah. And I think people, when I tell them that, they think that I'm just like interpreting dreams like, oh, the snake means boner, you know, or whatever, or <laughs> whatever, you know. Uh, and it's not that because people are like, well, tell me what my dream means. I'm like, you got to have context around where you are psychologically. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. the other thing about it. Like, I spend plenty of time just filling in my therapist or my analyst or whatever with, uh, is that what he is, an analyst? Well, that's what he refers to his person as. Yeah, you know, so maybe I, data. Yeah, I might call him an analyst. Uh, you know, but I, we talk. We talk first before we get into dream stuff. But then most of it is like you bring a dream to the table mm -hmm. and then you free associate. So like you like I, I close my eyes and like go back into the dream. Mm -hmm. like, well, what's and then you kind of like riff off of that. And it just sort of helps you, like... What if you don't have any dreams to come to the table with? Well, then you you could start with, like... Uh, dreams you've had? You, well, yeah, you could definitely do that. Because the, if you remember a dream, it might have a lot of meaning, you know? Um, but, like, there was a time where I really didn't know. We just kind of, like, I was a little hyperactive all over the place. It's just, like, close my eyes. <sighs> what do you see? You know, I'm like, I see a tree. All right, well, where is that tree? It's in Indiana. Where in Indiana? That's in my grandpa's backyard. Oh, your grandpa. Which grandpa? My mom's dad. Oh, what was he like? You know what I mean? It just starts to like, you go down. And, and, and that's the subconscious that's working in your dream is also working in your life. Hmm. You know, or working in that moment too, if you allow it. And plenty of people are just like answering questions. They can't do that. I'm, because I think I'm a creative person, or at least I can think in metaphor or abstractly, I can like free associate pretty comfortably in an authentic way for me. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I'm like, you know. But even that, what's really cool is like, there's another layer to all of it, right? Which is like, uh, you go, okay, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't feel like doing this right now. Oh, what's that feeling? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, like, why do you, why do you feel like that? I don't know. It just makes me uncomfortable. What's uncomfortable about it? You mm -hmm. know, and we started, there's like, so there's, so there's, it's just all ways in. It's the same, you know, and I started thinking about this too, and maybe I'm going too far. Uh, <laughs> I just had a little bit of whiskey. Whiskey uh, uh, I started thinking about how so much of this stuff, it's like the same damn trip, as they say. Like, I think of, like, I think of Carl Jung and, like, the relationship with the subconscious. And, like, I'm talking, I'm in communication with my subconscious. 
it's just like prayer hmm. in some ways. Like people or people who have like Christians who have like revelations, right? It's like that's like feeling like you're sending a message, you know, and and kind of like picking up what's coming resonating back. With yeah, what's resonating with you? That's and changing like, moving forward. I see it as like being interacting with your subconscious, hmm. but like I think some people might see that as like praying and having revelations, uh, or you know, like you have. Uh, so there's like a psychological approach. There is a religious approach, spiritual approach, Ram Das, like someone like that, who's sort of like, you know, we're working on different planes and all that stuff. Like, and, you know, we're dealing with our egos. Like, I don't know. I started to think that like psychology, religion, um, spirituality, and probably other stuff in the mix yeah. are all sort of the same thing. What what's your what was your first revelation in whiskey? My first whiskey revelation? Yeah. Uh well, I got to say, so like when I was in college, uh, I had, it was like when I first started drinking, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a whiskey revelation, but like that was the first time where I was like, I like was like laying there and I was like kind of drunk. I was by myself in a room and I was just like, Hey, there you are. I've been waiting for you. You know, I was like, all of a sudden I was like, Oh, that voice in my head wants to talk to me. <laughs> Weird. He wants me to pull the fire alarm at a hotel mm-hmm. and run through it naked. My voice wants me to do bad things. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I don't know. I think honestly, Woodford Reserve. When I started drinking Woodford Reserve, I was like, oh, whiskey doesn't have to just be like this hard thing to drink that mm-hmm. cowboys drink. Yeah, and it's not just for being sad. It's like it, it can be as good an experience as having a, a wonderful meal at a fine dining restaurant. What about yeah. for you? First whiskey revelation was honestly. I mean, we it was past thinking I liked whiskey and yeah. past being like whiskey's awesome. Yeah, it was when we were when we had Weller full proof because mm. like so much happened and I could and I think that's what. Uh, gave the ability to have the revelation was drinking whiskey for like a year prior to that. Yeah. Like actively and, and aware yeah. um, using awareness when nearly I was drinking. Nearly every week. It. Um, nearly every day. Yeah. A lot, <laughs> uh, well, especially during COVID, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of whiskey drinking, but, um, it's basically through COVID. And then when we kind of got together again and we, someone got a bottle of Fuller Well, Weller foolproof, uh, and we tasted it and so many things happened at that high proof. Yeah. And it was experience. It was good whiskey, good experience. Um, and something really interesting happening. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is what I'm chasing every time. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. I don't want, you know, daily sipper makes me want to throw up daily sipper. Yeah. Why the fuck would you want a daily sipper? Mm. It's like there's flame and yawn. Like, I want the cheap steak I can have every day. Yeah. No. Not really. I don't want... That's not what I'm going for. I'm not chasing just give me another steak to get to tomorrow. I want that filet mignon. I want that experience. I want that incredible taste. That doesn't mean it's cost more, but um, in the case of Weller Foolproof, it did. Or or whiskeys like Copper Sea, their single barrel, their 10-year anniversary one that we, yeah. we've had, like... That was like really, really special. Yeah. And um, that makes it more worth it to me. I don't necessarily need alcohol that way. Yeah. But I enjoy the alcohol side effects with those fun experiences. Yeah. My friend who's a chef said to me, uh, I said, I said, I don't know anything about food. Like I'm, I'm, I love food, you know, and I'm, I'm passionate about, uh, filming it and eating it and having these great experiences, but I don't really know anything about food. And she was like, no, that's not true. Like, you know how to drink, you know, you know that you need to look for stuff. It's like, you might, you really are, are deeper in it than you realize. Um, and I think that was sort of a revelation to me too. It's like, I can't sit and say, I'm, I'm just on the sidelines all the time. Once Mm -hmm. you, it's not about like, uh, uh, auxiliary knowledge or something or having like uh, uh, a degree in something or working professionally in something at some point it's about the urge to experience as a human being that's the thing that makes it special and fear is what keeps you out of certain arenas or yeah. taking 
responsibility for the, your feelings that you have towards something. Like sometimes even with whiskey, I'm like, oh, there's these people that are, you know, whiskey experts and there's, they own their distillers or whatever. There's uh, there's like podcasts that have been like di- di- deep dives and they have access to interviewing all these people. Yeah. Um, or like, uh, you know, like there's a YouTube channel, this great channel uh, of these guys in Texas that make, um, they do all kinds of fun, interesting whiskey experiments and stuff. But I'm like, our experience is no less or more valuable than theirs. Yeah. Even though they're approaching whiskey differently. Yeah. This show is all about us experiencing whiskey and whoever wants to do it with us. Yeah. And there doesn't need to be any other aspect to it. We don't need to educate we're not here to educate yeah. necessarily yeah we're just here to share our experience and use whiskey to look at ourselves and each other and try to reach some other level of being a good person <laughs> yeah okay just kidding i'm here to get drunk <laughs> <laughs> hey I'm Ryan Bayless. This is my brother, Alec Bayless. And this is the Whiskey Show. <laughs> and uh, as our great grandfather would say with his brother, to drink is to live. Is to live. <laughs>